All right, next question is from Braden Schutz. What are some good strength or mobility moves for the rotator cuff? Man, back in the day, this this was uh, when I first learned about strengthening the the muscles of the. Well, so first off, let's go into the rotator cuff. Yeah, what it's responsible for. So the cuff itself is a part of the of the shoulder blade, where certain stabilizer muscles attach to, um, that affect the shoulder. So you have these what are called big prime mover muscles. So like you're pressing overhead or you're bench pressing, you're using these big. You know, the big muscles of the shoulders, the, the front part of the deltoid, the side, the rear part, you know, the, the muscles that make up the deltoid. Mm -hmm. But there's deeper muscles that control your arm's twist, the rotating that happens. So, like, let's say I throw a baseball um, and, I and I throw a baseball real hard. The muscles that stabilize the shoulder are really what helps slow my arm down. Or if I throw a punch yeah. or a frisbee. It keeps These your bone in track, too. So it, it keeps everything in, in the right spot. Right. And so what the reason why there's so many issues with the, the rotator cuff or the muscles that stabilize the shoulder is because we tend to work the big muscles. We work the big movements. And we don't strengthen the support system so much. So then when you go and do an explosive movement or you push really heavy weight, these stabilizer muscles can't keep up with these big muscles. Now, I remember when this first happened to me. I was uh, in my teens. I was in my late teens, maybe 17, 18 years old. I'd been working out now for a while, and I was starting to get pretty strong. My bench press was getting up there. Overhead press was getting up there. I could do heavy, heavy rows. And I remember that it, I, I had this string of kind of shoulder pain where I was – my bench press would, would, would go up a little bit, and then my shoulder would kind of tweak a little bit, and it would go back down. I couldn't figure out – what was going on. And, you know, this is back in the in the late 90s. I used to read bodybuilding magazines. Well, in the back of one of the bodybuilding magazines, there was this device that worked on the rotator cuff. And I think it was called a, a shoulder horn or something like that. Couldn't remember. I can't remember what it was called, but it held your arms up. So you put it around your neck and it went around your arms and it held your arms up kind of in this like T position. And then what you did is you held dumbbells and, and you, you rotated ro back. Flip them back. Yeah. And it was the first time had ever been exposed to mm -hmm. a, you know, an, a external rotating uh, type movement. So I, I, of course, being a frugal kid, I read that and I said, oh, I can do that without that thing. And I went up to a bench, put my elbow up on the bench, and I started doing this external rotation uh, with a really light dumbbell. Couldn't believe how much stronger my bench press got mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Like I did that the following week, my bench press that was stuck forever at whatever weight went up five or 10 pounds. And I was like, holy cow, this is a really big deal. And since that day, I've incorporated external rotation uh, in, in my, uh, my shoulder workouts or in many of my shoulder workouts. Now, uh, I'll recommend one that I think is generally easy for most people to do because some of them I think are more difficult. It's a targeted movement for uh, part of the uh, stabilizer muscles that I think a lot of people tend to have issues with. And those are the ones that externally rotate uh, the, the the humerus. So I'll kind of try and break it down here on the podcast. So what you do is you stand with your arm at your side, elbow bent, have a resistance band attached to something, and then just rotate while keeping your elbow bent and stuck to your side, just rotate your hand out mm -hmm. and bring it back in. That's it. Very basic movement very direct movement on strengthening some of the muscles that I think a lot of people tend to have uh, issues with. Yeah. I like face pulls too, like in terms of like emulating a little bit of what you're talking about uh, with the cables. And I, I use that a lot as a primer uh, getting into overhead pressing uh, for that specific reason. Uh, it's really prime, you know, that, that external rotation. Uh, and uh, again, this is, this is where um like I don't really know any other movement that nails all the different functions and the rotation of the shoulder better than a heart swing. And I've I've promoted this uh, you know ad nauseum on my Instagram because I want people to realize that there's ways to actually exercise uh, you know these these muscles. It, the, it, and, and you do like, those are some very common ones you get from like the physical therapist. Like yeah. if, if you're injured, you, you have like a rubber band and, and you're going to do some external rotation with it and some abduction and things like that. However, like taking it through all those different uh, ranges of motion, uh, uh, you know, and then starting to slowly load it. So loading it to something that's like one to two pounds, uh, but then taking it in. So you, you basically start in sort of a racked position. So my hands like really close to my chest and then I'm throwing my arm across my body getting that rotation to come into extension and then all the way up and then kind of behind my back, behind my neck, 
and then dropping my shoulder down. And it just kind of like seamlessly flows through like all those different points of rotation, which is a great exercise. I'm I'm going to piggyback off of you, Justin, because I think nothing is better than the Indian clubs and the mace bells for this stuff. I think that um, to what Sal was talking about and the point that you just made, uh, the only – because that, that was what I used to do for rotator cuff stuff is very – Staple, um, you know, standing. It's with the rehabby. Cable. Yeah, very. Yeah. And not only yeah. is it, re, it's also uh, in a in the same plane. And the shoulder is one of the most complex joints in the entire body. It's multifaceted, right? It moves in all these different planes. It's very dynamic. Mm-hmm. And the reality of it is, rarely ever will you ever move your arm or shoulder in this exact same plane. Whenever you do normal things, you, you're going to move in multiple. So. I like to strengthen and and work on the rotator cuff in something that's more dynamic, like Indian clubs or mace bell. I think uh, again, this was something that you, Justin, really introduced me to, and has now become a staple in my routine. Before that, I was like Sal. I was the kid who found the rotator cuff exercises. I also mm-hmm. noticed what a big difference it made on my my bench press. Not only how much stronger I got and support I felt, um, but I just didn't hurt as much. Like mm-hmm. I used to always, like my shoulders would kind of bother me all the time uh, when I would do uh, heavy chest. And when I began to start to uh, start workouts with rotator cuff exercises, I noticed that it would alleviate that. So that was like the big connection for me first with that. And then when I got introduced to the Indian clubs and mace belt with Justin, uh, what I found was, oh, this is really cool. I can, once I got good at those movements, I could just start every kind of upper body. If I was ever doing chest or shoulders, I always, still to this day, start uh, my routine with just a quick little Indian club and mace bell warm up. And I've, I've over time gotten stronger and stronger. So I can, for me, I, and I'll never forget the first time swinging that mace bell it was awkward and hard and five pounds of it was weird and the indian clubs the super light ones were difficult and challenging once i trained that and got really good now i just got to grab i can go grab the 30 pound mace ball right now cold and start swinging around no problem or the 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 heavier um indian clubs we have i can get right into it because i've done a good job of keeping that up and my shoulders have never felt so good and it doesn't take a lot of work and effort if i just include it into my routine and it's important because i mean if if you're like me and you you know you're, you're trying to throw the ball with your kids you know or, or whatever it is like the like you'd be very surprised if you haven't done it for like years or decades and then you all of a sudden start throwing a ball again like what kind of aches and pains and things are gonna you know come out of that and so to keep that in your routine is is paramount to then you know keep you functional and keep you active in your in your everyday life totally and uh you know i'll give you one that you can go on our youtube channel uh and look up and we have a good video on handcuffs uh with rotation oh, that's a great yeah, one. great shoulder movement um it works the the shoulder through a pretty full range of motion and uh, you know unless you're injured um it's a great uh movement that you can do priming movement that'll maintain uh, good health of the shoulders. And we again, we have a really good video on our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV.